Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. It's incredibly hot here in Sussex, so I'm sitting in the garden, so there may be a bit of background noise, cars passing and what have you, and the children, um, well, a couple of them are out at the moment, but they may be back, so it could be a bit noisy. But it's the summer holidays, and I thought this week we would talk about how I'm planning on navigating the summer holidays. What what I'm putting in place, what plans we've got, and how we're managing things as a family. So I sit down most Sundays with Simon and we do our diaries together. And we plan out, you know, the week ahead, the month ahead, whatever it is and what's going on. Now things for Simon and I have had to adjust quite significantly. And actually this episode, Get your partners, get your children to listen to, because hopefully it will be helpful um, so you don't have the brunt of everything put on you. And I used to do a lot more than I do now of other things. We're going to talk about that and I'm going to explain that. But when the children were little, Simon worked really hard. I mean, he still works really hard. He travelled a lot and I had help with the house and we had a nanny and then au pairs. Obviously I had three tiny children together and so, you know, it, it was it was juggling at, but Simon would get back from work and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do anything, nothing. It's, you know, and I married somebody that's a lot older that hadn't had children and I often think to myself, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but actually, you can, you can, you can, you can. And, you know, I I used to run Sleepy Cozy. I've talked about that a lot, but it wasn't really full time. I could juggle that easily with everything else that I had going on with the family, with cooking, with, you know, running a household. And so I didn't need Simon to step in very much. He could come home from work and sit down and relax and do nothing and not be weighted on hand and foot, but but sort of he was. But now I have got really, really busy. I run, obviously, Ask Charlie. I've got the B&B here. I've got the holiday lets down in Devon. And I'm on a couple of committees. I'm a trustee of an estate. There's lots going on and I don't have the time to do all the things that I used to do. And so there has been a big period of adjustment um, over a number of years with the family dynamics. And because I, there was a time where I was really struggling to do it all. I wasn't coping brilliantly because you can't be a full-time working mother and run a household and do all of the cooking, all of the laundry, the garden, you know, all of these things you can't just do as one person because you will break, you will burn out and you will start being resentful to, to, to your family, to your loved ones. I talk about this a lot in the Efficient Home course and actually just mentioning the Efficient Home course, there's a waiting list for the next course which will be in the autumn. So if you'd like to join, um, I will leave the link in the description below so you can join the waiting list. So when um, I run that again, you can join and be on the course. But there has been this big adjustment within our family as I have got more busy and I haven't been able to do everything. And so Simon and I um, have, have had to sort of work together to get him more involved. And I'm gonna talk through the things that he has taken on to take the burden off of me. So obviously Simon is an older dad. He hadn't been married before. He didn't have children. And so, you know, when we had the children and we had help and he just did his thing and he came home and, and that was fine. But then, then it wasn't fine. And I, I actually started resenting the fact that he came home every evening and sat on the sofa with the paper or watching TV or whatever it was and would expect supper to be, you know, put on the table and that he didn't, you know, have to get involved. He has actually come up trumps. It hasn't, uh, it's taken time and it has evolved and he's still, I'm oh, sorry, I've got bits of paper blowing. 
or windy, but I want to share those with you in a minute. Um, it's taken time and things have sort of evolved and it's about communicating and communication is key. So the things that he does, let's talk about those, is he is in charge of emptying the bins, he's in charge of the rubbish, he is in charge of dog poo, he is in charge of all of the children's extracurricular things. Obviously I get, get involved but he gets you know all of the whatsapps, re kind of cricket, football, rugby, boys stuff. I tend to do all the pony stuff obviously with Coco you know that's that's separate and I do that but he's he does all of that side which is a massive undertaking. He does all of the sort of school admin um, and he's brilliant at it. And actually it's much easier for one parent to do. And I don't have the time to do that. He, because I think because he goes to work um, and he might s spend an extra hour in the office doing all of that side of things and he can just do it with a clear head and he can crack on and do it. I personally find working from home quite tricky because there's constantly a distraction. The washing machine might need emptying, the dishwasher might go off, the phone may ring, the dogs may bark, somebody might need something. So I, I do find it difficult to kind of sit down and have a clear head without being interrupted. So actually over the school holidays I've decided that I'm still going to get up at six most mornings, not every morning but most mornings, sort of Monday to Friday, and I'm just gonna have an hour, a quiet hour before everybody's up. And I love that quiet time just to catch up with admin bits and pieces I just need to do without the constant mamas. Mama, 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 mama. It gets, you know, it's hard when you're trying to concentrate and you're being interrupted. So actually that hour between six and seven is just gonna be my quiet time. I'm then gonna do a quick workout, 30 minutes, and then I might need to spend some time during the morning working, may need to record an episode of the podcast, my YouTube channel, <laughs> it's looking Florence, um, whatever it might be, but you know, that those sort of first hours in the morning, the children can sort of amuse themselves. And then I've got the rest of the day to go off and do things. And, you know, Simon is also, it's really important that you sit down as we do on a Sunday evening and just plan out the week you know if I've got something in my diary that I need to do I can say right darling can you be in charge can you have the children for a few hours while I go off and do this thing and he's become really understanding that I can't do it all you know that and he will help he will even help do the B&B &B room he's also in charge of watering it might sound silly but actually if he's watering I can be cooking supper or washing up or whatever it might be so he's in charge of the watering watering of the kitchen garden watering of, of the, the tubs and things in fact Gus is very very good at watering all of the containers around the garden which is excellent Simon has got really involved in picking things from the kitchen garden so he'll come you know he'll go up with his basket which is so lovely and he'll come back with you know some lettuces or some cucumbers or whatever it might be and and that just saves me time he's um you know he he does the dogs when he's here obviously when he's not here then I do them and I think it's really important to get the children involved and helping. So everybody's got a job that they do. Coke's, Coca helps with the ponies. Archie's really good at watering the dog, uh, walk, watering the dogs, <laughs> walking the dogs. Gussie waters the garden. They will whiz the hoof around. Get them involved, get them helping. I think we can become really resentful if it all falls on us and we are doing everything. So, you know, do give the children a duster. You might need to clear a surface for them, but even little children can help. You know, give them a dustpan and brush and ask them to sweep up, give them a broom, give them a feather duster. Get them involved and it's teaching them really important life lessons. Yes, it's easier often to do it yourself but it's only easier in the short term. It's not easier in the long term. Get them helping in the kitchen. 
Archie has become an absolute whiz at cooking things um, for lunch. You know, he'll often cook pasta, he'll often make burgers, he'll do all sorts of things. Coco's great on the baking side of things. And Gus is just, on the whole, quite a helpful little chap. And so get them involved. We make sure that our children get up in the mornings, make their bed, get dressed, brush their teeth, you know, do all of that thing, help clear away breakfast, get them involved. And then they know that when I'm spending a couple of hours in the morning working, they can go off and do something and amuse themselves. And then in the afternoons, we might go and have an outing. We might go somewhere, you know, every day looks slightly different, but I've got a bit of a routine. The children know the school, they know what's going on. They know they can't just get up, turn the TV on and please themselves because that's starting the day on a bad note. If they've done the things that they need to do and they've come to you and they've said, you know, mommy, I've done everything, then fine. Okay, you can go on your Xbox or you can go on your iPad or, or whatever it is. And they know that they have to help. Coco's really, really helpful with the ponies. Obviously, my children are at the age where they are actually helpful. <laughs> there was a long period of time where they weren't. And I know that, you know, it's hard work when you're kind of in the trenches and it's full on and it's exhausting. But I, I think it's so important, you know, to get your children to tidy up at the end of the day. Why should you do it? If they're gonna get their toys out, they need to learn to look after them. They need to learn to help. And Simon's become really good at backing me up and saying, come on kids, you need to sort this out. You need to hang up your towel. So it's not just me that is the bad guy nagging all the time. We very much co-parent and I, I know I'm really lucky to have him, but it has taken work and it's taken me sitting down to him and saying, I can't do all of this on my own. I need your support. I need your backup. And so, you know, what are you going to do <laughs> to help? And he's taken on all these things um, to help me. And it takes the pressure off me. So actually, life is much happier and much easier. And I'm really noticing the difference. And when I first started to ask Charlie, he didn't really get it. He found it frustrating. It took up a lot of my time. I wasn't earning anything from it. And he was a bit resentful and it did take me sitting down and chatting to him and explaining um, in a calm manner of actually, you know, it, it might look like I'm just faffing around at home, but actually I'm trying to make this, this a thing. It's much easier if you have an office to go to or a proper career, but it's really important that, that you know, you work together as a team because otherwise you do become bitter you do become resentful and it's frustrating and that's when tension arises and happens and so i really wanted to talk to you all about this and how then you can have a happier summer holidays so let's talk a little bit about you know the summer and what we're doing so i'm getting up at six i'm having my quiet hour with everybody is still asleep which is bliss i love it and i find that a really productive time i am then doing my exercise because that is good for me and it's really important that i do that to keep strong i don't do it to have a bikini body i do it to feel good, to feel energized, to feel invigorated. It gives me more energy to get through the day. So I'm doing that. If the children are awake, I'm encouraging them to join in. They've obviously got to, you know, get up and do all of their things before they can kind of have tech time. And then I'm spending a couple of hours in the mornings doing my worky things that I need to do. And then I've got the rest of the day to, to be there for the children. We are going down to Devon for a week, which will be really lovely. And actually, it's the first time that we have been down there without a house full, without lots of friends coming down. We are just having a quiet week. Archie isn't coming with us. He has been invited to Italy, which is very, very exciting for him. He will be greatly missed. Actually, we're only taking Florence and Penny because, um, well, it's complicated but we've got to go to a memorial service 
on our way to Devon and actually we couldn't turn up with six dogs and I want to have a little bit of a break while I'm down there. I want to just rest and recharge. I've got some jobs that I need to do, um, sorting out mum's things that still need to be sorted out. So I'm going to use that week to have a bit of a sort out and a lot of downtime, which I'm really, really looking forward to because it's so important that we have some downtime and I'm going to try and have less time on my phone and more time just being reading books, relaxing, recharging, surfing, long walks, great food, and I cannot wait. We're then um, going to be back from Devon and we've got a couple of weeks here where I've got things in the diary, but don't overbook yourself. Don't be rushing around like a maniac. Children need a bit of downtime. They don't need constant things the entire time. Let them get bored let them use their imagination and have a bit of time to recharge. I think particularly I've noticed my children are exhausted, absolutely exhausted at the end of term. And we've got to think that actually they've had so much time out of school that it's quite a shock to their system being back in full time, long days. We've got to allow them some downtime. I think with COVID and homeschooling, we are still adjusting to kind of being back and being busy. And I know that the last month for us has been really crazy. There's been so much in the diary that actually I'm just not overbooking ourselves. We're just going to enjoy. We're just going to be. We're going to read books. They can play their musical instruments. They can make up games in the garden. They can do all, all of those things. Now, I want to show you these so household chart and i will leave this linked in the description below so you can download and get your own copy so you can write out what your children's responsibilities are i don't call it a, a chore chart because i think that's got a negative connotation and we want to be as positive and we want to be as upbeat as possible so i don't say you've got to do your chores they just have to do their responsibilities the things that they're responsible for and obviously it's going to depend on the age and you know whatever but you know, get them involved, get them feeding animals, get them emptying the dishwasher, get them helping with the laundry. One of Coco's things to do is to bring in all of the washing from the line. I hang it out because I hang it out properly. She's learning, she's learning, but it's quite tall for her to reach the top of the washing line. So I do that, but she brings it all in and folds it and that helps massively. You know, so get them helping pairing up socks and, and putting laundry away. Don't take it all on yourself. It is so important. I've even got Simon pairing up socks and folding pants. And he did it with the greatest heart because I had a mountain and he could see that I needed help. So I said, come on, darling, you can help me. We can go to bed slightly earlier. And, and, and we just, you know, got on. And actually many hands make light work. So it is really important to get people involved. So then this is my planner and I keep this in my diary. I will link it below. I am looking to have it made into a wipeable um, board, hopefully magnetic that could maybe go on your fridge and you can just easily reuse it rather than printing off bits of paper, which is far better for the environment. And I find that really useful just to plan out and the children can see it, they know what I'm doing, they know what is going on. So those are quite useful things that, well, I find them really useful, so hopefully you will as well. Now, the other thing that I think is really important that we talk about now is school uniform. Now, I know you're going to say, Charlie, it's July. We don't want to think about it, but you do need to think about it. If you're changing school, you need to make sure that you've got new uniform. You need to make sure that everything fits for September. I don't recommend that you buy shoes you know, at this stage. Children grow massively over the summer holidays. So I do leave that to closer to the time. But make sure that you have got name tapes. Make sure that you are you know, under control with the uniform. And if you need to buy bigger sizes, if you need to buy a whole lot of new uniform, then do that 
you know, now. Maybe buy it slightly bigger so there's room to grow. I am a big advocate of that. If there's a second hand shop, I'm also a big advocate of that too, which is why I love, you know, the stitch on name tapes. But get organized with that now. Don't leave it to the last minute and there'd be, you know, a blind panic in August as it's approaching and it comes around so quickly. So think ahead, get it now. In the old days when I was uber organized and I had help and I wasn't juggling so many things, I actually used to make sure that all their name tape September was done before they broke up in July. So I didn't have to do that. That's great if you, you know, can do that. Absolutely brilliant idea. I haven't had time to do that, but I know that I am not going to leave it to the last minute and I'm going to make sure that everything's organized. Make sure that you have got all of their, you know, sports coat, everything's washed, put away, ready for September, for when your children go back to school and you know that, that it's just under control, organized and honestly, please, please, please um, take this bit of advice because also, you know, come August, lots of people are away. The shops may have run out of your sizes, etc., etc. So just do it now. <laughs> Charlie says, do it now. I think the other thing that we've talked to our children about is we've still got the tech rules in place so they don't have phones up in their bedroom. I want them to get really, really good night's sleeps. They know the school. They know that, yes, we can have some fun evenings. We can stay up a bit later, but they have to, you know, get up in the mornings. I don't want them lying in bed till lunchtime. It's a waste of life. Yes, occasionally it's fine if you've had a really late night and you need to recharge, but actually I want them up. I mean, mine are Archer's nearly 14, Coke's is 12. I want them up by nine. I know some of you that are listening that have got much younger, younger children are like, by nine, that would be absolute bliss. But, you know, they're going to bed later. So we're not having, you know, it changes. Things adapt. I don't, you know, when they were smaller, they would be in bed by 7, 7.30 and now, and, and up early. Now, I, I actually like to, them to all be in bed before I go to bed. I just feel comfier. But sometimes I do go to bed before the children. And in the summer holidays, I want them, you know, to have a relaxing time, but still have a routine. I mean, Coco and I last night rode after supper because it was so hot and it was just much, much cooler. And I'd done the things that I needed to do in the house. We'd all eaten as a family. And then we went up and rode and she helped me get the stables ready for the morning. So I'm bringing them in, in the mornings. In fact, Coco's bringing them in in the mornings. But I make sure that all the stables are ready the night before and she helps with that. It's really important. If she's gonna have ponies, she's got to help. She's got to be involved. I am not doing it and she knows that. She knows I mean business. The ponies will go if she is not showing willing. Luckily, she's amazing. She loves her riding, so she is super, super helpful. She spends hours up there. But, you know, unless children are going to help, you know, lots of people say, you know, I've got, I've got these pets, but the children don't get involved. Well, just get rid of them. If they're not gonna help, you know, Gus looks, Billy is his tortoise. Gus feeds him, Gus baths him. Gus has to be responsible. Of course, when Gus isn't here, then it falls on me. But when they are around, they have to help. And I think the last thing that I am gonna to talk to you about is, you know, trips, booking things in. Everything now is online. You can't just think, okay, we'll, go to the cinema this afternoon. Well, sometimes you can, but actually you need to plan it in advance. If you're going to a theme park, if you're having a family day out, plan it in advance, book your tickets online. There's lots of offers, there's lots of discounts. So, you know, take a little bit of time to plan that. Take your children to go and visit interesting places. We went to Hever Castle last summer. The children are still talking about it. They absolutely loved it. There's so much on offer here in England. And I know that not all of you uh, viewers are here in England, but 
There is lots, you know, around the world that we can go and see that's on our doorstep. We don't need to spend a fortune. We don't need to travel hundreds of miles. Just take advantage of what's on your doorstep. Take some time to do a little bit of research and to plan some really nice activities that you don't need to overbook your children. You don't have to have something happening all the time. Let them have a bit of downtime. Let them get a little bit of bored. Let them, you know, get creative and make things and, and just be. I think it's so important just to let children have some time to rest and relax rather than rushing from one thing to another and really overstimulating them. They need that time just to recharge and regroup, especially, and I know I've talked about this already, especially after what we've been through. They're, I think they're very brave, these people that are out riding today. There's lots of people riding past now. It's so unbelievably hot. I know I wouldn't want to ride in the middle of the day. But I hope that this has been helpful. Delegate, get your family involved. Don't be a martyr and do it all yourself. You will be resentful and, and burn out. Obviously, if it's your role just to be housewife and just to run your family, then that's absolutely fine. And it looks different for everybody. But I know that I need help and support from, from my family. And since um, Simon and I cook is just walking up across the garden there, she caught my eye. Um, you know, since I've sat down and chatted to Si and said, you know, come on, darling, I can't do all of this. I need you to help. I need you to be more involved. Oh, look, she's going to sit on the swing and um, enjoy that. It's why it's, it's so lovely still having a climbing frame because they do, they do still use it. Um, but, you know, he has been so helpful and so supportive. And it makes me really happy when I see him coming down from the kitchen garden or saying, darling, I'm taking on all the watering because I know that will make your life easier. And it's about teamwork. It's about working together, but it's about communication. Communication is key. It is so important to talk about how you're feeling and what's going on. And hopefully, these tips and me rambling to you all will ensure that you have a really, really happy summer holiday. I'm really looking forward to, to this summer and just having some time, you know, quietly with the family, recharging while we're down in Devon. We do have a lovely family holiday. My lovely uncle is taking all the family to Turkey this year for a week in August, which I'm really excited about. And it's always lovely spending time um, with them. But I know Devon for me is going to be a real place this summer to rest and recharge and regroup and, you know, um, and just be and read some books. I've got some good books that I want to read. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. I am sending you lots and lots of love and I will see you again very, very soon.